All right, so the next thing we're gonna be hooking up today is a NEMA 2000 system. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you can do a lot of Googling. Um, basically, it's a, it's a two-wire bus system, and it allows uh, multiple things inside your boat to communicate. Now, it could be something as simple as uh, your engine electronics. Um, you'll find that if you don't have uh, the Yamaha like command gauges or anything like that, um, and, and even those gauges, you're only getting some data. You're not getting a whole lot. Um, but basically, this bus system will allow uh, your boat to communicate to multiple things. So let's say you want to look at your fuel data on your GPS and calculate whether you can make it to a, a certain area. You can do that. You have the, the fuel data is going to be shown over the, over the network uh, and things like that. Now, it's a little bit different than an Ethernet connection, like what you're going to have for like a sonar or a radar. Uh, this bus, it's, it's a really simple bus. It's limited to basically a, a square wave signal. So on off, on off in milliseconds, and that's how it communicates uh, things. So basically anything uh, numerical, like a GPS points, um, coolant temps, water temp, pressure numbers, anything data related, not picture related, uh, can pretty much be transferred over, over that bus. So I've already started setting this up on this boat. Um, really simple. Basically, uh, you have these little T connectors. Um, these are bad boys right here, and this gray one is a solo one. Um, and that allows you to tie in anything. So uh, this one is currently running back to my nav. Uh, and then at the end of your, of your, uh, of your bus, uh, not the devices are going to, but the actual bus. So this is the starting, this is the ending. You have to have a terminal resistor. And if you just pull these things off, there's just a little, a little resistor in there. Um, same on, on this end. If you don't have those resistors, the bus doesn't communicate. So uh, always keep that in mind. Now, this bus doesn't make its own power. Um, so one of those cords, uh, that if you get like a starter kit, one of these cords is just going to be a power and ground uh, to to get this bus fired up so it actually has a voltage to communicate over. Uh, remember to always fuse it. Um, it's just a 5 amp fuse. You're not drawing any power with this thing. Um, so just very, very little amperage is needed. All right, so this is a cable we're gonna be using to tie in uh, the Yamaha to my navigation. Um, this is one of those T connectors I was telling you about. Real simple, you got a male and female end and then your communication side. Um, so we're just gonna add this T to my existing system up there and then the cable is gonna plug in to the T. And then this bad boy is going to connect into the Yamaha. Now, if you already have uh, gauges, the square gauges, the, the command link, sometimes they're round, sometimes they're square. It just depends on the ones you got. Uh, you're gonna have one of these bad boys. I forget the proper name for them, uh, but they're under here. Um, basically, this is a little hub for it. You got power going in. This is a, a bus link from the outboard to this device. This is the outbound. So if you wanna have more than just two or three gauges, you can hoop one of these to another one of these, add another power, and then you can connect three more devices. So today all we're gonna be doing is using that cable. We're gonna remove this empty uh, device spot here. As soon as I get two hands to take it off. Uh, and we're gonna plug our cable in there. So as I was saying, it's just a dummy connector. There's nothing on the slot. So you toss that aside, and then we're gonna plug our new cable in here. Just like that. And then we're going to add a T to our loop here and uh, tie it all in. So you just pull the resistor off, slide a new T in. So that's in place. And then we're going to put our resistor back in the end here to complete this bus. like so. And then now we're going to tie our cable from the top here right into this port. Because these are super simple. I mean, if you can plug in your, your internet to your computer, you can do this. All right, we'll check so it out. Over here on our sim ride, you can now go to instruments. And you can tell, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I got 
voltage here, trim, engine temp, fuel, uh, engine's not running, so we don't have any, anything else to go by. Um, but yeah, everything's there. Now, on my Garmin, it's already asking me to configure some stuff um, that we need to put in. So my fuel capacity, 150 gallons. So all that stuff's there too. Um, yeah. So one of the other cool things about NEMA 2000 is not just limited to uh, navigation and engine data. Um, there's some other things that you can uh, add on there. You can add individual sensors, so air temp, water temp, things like that. Uh, you can actually add your CB radio, uh, AIS. So if you want to, you know, translate that data between other modules, um, you hit a mayday, you can send your AIS from your GPS over your radio signal. That's certainly possible. Um, and now I know there's only so much space on on your dash um, on some of these boats, but uh, you can actually connect your stereo. So instead of having uh, another face plate or something you got to cut a hole in your dash for, um, you can have modules now that are tucked away uh, and can pair up with your Simrad or your Garmin and you can control your stereo right off your multifunction display instead of having a, a separate single din radio or, or a smaller pod somewhere else. So things to think about when you're putting your boat together. Uh, NEMA 2000, I would highly recommend uh, putting that in your next boat.